Hey guys, Nathan Sissio here, Sissio Performance. I wanted to do a little review of our Zenith and Zenith R turbo kit. So this is something that we've had out for a long time. And it was an interesting kind of reveal because when we first got and brought it out, there wasn't the supply to actually um, produce enough of them to sell to anybody else. So I didn't really announce it publicly very loudly, other than the fact that we were kind of stating that they were on our cars um, and going, you know, going to the drag strip and, and our, our customers' cars. So, um, so they got kind of soft released and then not really released and there was just never any extreme details about them. So I wanted to just kind of do a little video and tell you a few things that I think are extremely special about this particular kit that just kind of set it a head and shoulders above the rest. Um, so I'll throw some stats at you here in a minute, so, but I'm going to just walk you through the kit a little bit prior to that. Uh, if you don't know our Zenith and our Zenith R, they're both the same kit housing the same physical size of turbo. Uh, one turbo, the Zenith, is a 58 millimeter kit, which is class legal in the 58 millimeter uh, stuff. I don't say class legal like it's a cheater turbo, but it's class legal in the 58 millimeter stuff. It's just not as prevalent anymore, the 58 millimeter stuff as it used to be. Um, and then the uh, Zenith R kit is actually like a 63 point something millimeter inducer kit um, with a different turbine and a few different little tricks on the Zenith R versus the Zenith, um, but the same frame. Actually, if you do go with a Zenith kit and you want to upgrade to a Zenith R kit down the road, all you do have to do is change the turbos themselves physically. So anyway, a couple of details about the kit. Uh, number one, is they are optional with external, they have external wastegates, but they're optional either with recirculating dumps or with atmospheric dumps. Uh, you probably know the difference between those two. One obviously gives you a little bit less exhaust into the exhaust system and a little bit louder uh, sound when you open the throttle wide open and the boost kicks in. So they all have come standard with three and a half inch down pipes. They're optional with three and a half inch V-bands or three and a half inch two bolt, or a neck down to three inch two bolt. They all come standard with also three and a half inch uh, inlets um, to get the air into the actual turbocharger itself. It is recommended to go with a three and a half inch intake if you're going to do um, our kit. Um, they also come, this is another uh, kind of, I'd say a point that I'm proud of, is all hardline kits. Like this is all hardline like oil drain, coolant lines, and your oil feed is all physical hard line. And it's all built in the United States and it is rugged. And it fits flawlessly, it just lays on, bolts up, and fits absolutely perfectly. Um, makes it so you're never gonna get something that's laying against a manifold, you're never gonna get something that changes position based on you know, at the torque of the engine or uh, whatever that may be. They're really, really, really nice. Um, we spent a lot of time perfecting those. So uh, they do retain the factory turbo outlet. So you do not need an aftermarket turbo outlet that ensures the fitment here, as well as your fitment to your lower intercooler pipe. They feature a fully molded outlet to the compressor cover. So a lot of these compressor covers and in, in these kits, they are just your standard compressor cover that come with your Garrett or your Precision or whatever it may be. And then the company that sells the kit welds the elbow onto it. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about that, but and we've done it before in some of our other turbo kits, but it's just a, another failure point. It's a weld right at the base of this turbo outlet right here. There's a possibility for there being pinholes in the casting, any type of leaking or anything like that. Um, and it also, the fitment is not the same every single time because you've got a physical person cutting one, cutting the other, twisting it, putting it in a jig and welding it, heat changes things and so on and so forth. So this is a big feature of our kit that every single one of them is the same. Um, aerodynamically for the air inside of the turbocharger, it's also better. I'm not gonna say that some big, huge thing uh, at this power level, but you know, I haven't seen any type of actual performance gains that are quantifiable. 
but these do perform extremely well and they fit perfectly every single time. So if you're buying it for your shop to install, you, they're not gonna have to fight this kit. They just, they literally just, I don't wanna say they fall on, but they fit very well. Um, obviously you have your tile hot side as well that works with the full turbocharger. Um, these are different from the Zenith to the Zenith R, the size of the physical hot side. Uh, the Zenith R is a slightly larger uh, turbine uh, hot side here, as well as a slightly different turbine wheel, but that's yeah, here and there. Okay, so then we come down to one of the main key points to this kit, which kind of is, we'll call it the root, like what positions the entire kit, which is the manifold. This is a cast one piece manifold. Um, all the way from the head, the runners, all merged together, cast, all the way to the flanges. Now, that's a big deal. So let me explain that to you. Even when you have a cast piece like this, most of them have welded on the flanges, like the, they're, 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 they're finish welded, okay? So that means that the placement of the turbocharger and the placement of the wastegate itself I don't want to say there's variation because there's not necessarily always, but it is, there's a human factor to it. Somebody has to sit there, you know, grind this surface flat right here, put, made a flange to it, weld it. If there's any heat, any warping, well, if something happens here that pitches this one way or the other, even just that much, it throws this off way further or this off way further. So then what you got to do is you got to get in there. This sounds silly, but it happens with lots of turbo kits with pry bars and you got to, you know, kind of put everything together loose and position it all where you want and then tighten it down. And it's kind of under some, you know, some stress. That happens with a lot of turbo kits. It help happened with our early turbo kits. This kit, that is something that, that this avoids that. So this is cast one piece and machined Every single one of them exactly the same. There's no welds all the way down to the flanges. And that ensures that the positioning of your wastegate and the position of your turbocharger, which then positions the ends of your turbo kit is absolutely the spot on and the same every single time. And it's, it's a big deal. Uh, we put a lot of work into it with the company that makes them for us. Um, we had to buy a lot of them to make that happen. And we're very, very proud of this. And it really makes a huge difference as far as fit and finish. That doesn't necessarily make a difference as far as power. You know, whether you weld this on or whether it's machined, it doesn't make any difference because it's put with power, but it makes a big difference in fit and finish, longevity, no cracking, they can't crack. There's no welds over time, so on and so forth. It's just a really nice piece that goes with the whole rest of the nice kit. So let's just throw out there some numbers. You know, we've had some people hating on, oh, how are you using the factory outlet? oh, why are you using a little compressor cover when you could use a bigger compressor cover and it'll make more power? Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe it will make a little bit more power. Maybe it won't. But I will say these turbo kits perform, okay? So we have had cars, now our internal shop car, which is Jan's car, has been 750 on this turbo kit, okay? You may say, oh, that's a shop car. They probably have some other stuff done to it. And maybe we do. But uh, no, we don't actually. We have customer car, uh, Tony's car, we'll give for, for, for instance, a full weight, the guy drives it. I mean, there's nothing crazy about this car. Has been 768 on this turbo kit at 189 miles an hour. If Tony's listening to this and it's 188 miles an hour, I'm sorry, but I think it's 189. We'll call it 188. So this is your turbo kit that you got by, you put on your car. It can very easily make a beautiful 12, 13, 1400 horsepower graph, but I don't feel the necessity to make some crazy outlet, to do some crazy different cover that's got a welded on deal when I can go 100 and almost 190 mile an hour on this turbo kit. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask for when it comes to a, a, just a nice, concise, perfectly installable, clears the framework perfectly uh, style turbo kit. Um, the uh, FedEx guy is coming in and I think that's probably causing some, that's okay. We're just going to keep going. So anyway, um, some 60 to 130 times. Jan on the street has been 267 on the street. Okay. 239 on the track, 60 to 130. Okay. Um, Tony 
two four something on the track and I don't know, 270 or 280 on the street. I use these two because these are two guys that were, they go race with us all the time. But these kits continue to perform over and over and over again. If you've got a well set up car with a nicely built engine with good cams and good heads, the car is gonna go, you know, in the twos on the street. That's fast. That's really, really fast um, for a kit of this, of this kind of like level, that 60 something millimeter kit. So we're very proud of that. And then if you want to crank the thing up and give it all of it, the thing will go well into the sevens at well over 185 miles an hour, which again, we're proud of. So um, yeah, um, that's probably about all I wanted to kind of give you guys a insight on all the little details about the kit. Again, I'm happy, very proud of this kit. Something that, I, I mean, I came to my media guy, Henry, I was like, I really want to do a video on this motor because, before it goes in because a lot of people don't understand all the love and all the stuff and all the phone calls and oh man, can we change this and can we change that? Can we make that a little better and that a little better? That's happened over the last, last couple of years um, with our turbo kits. And I just wanted to, wanted to share it with everybody. So if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask. We do have these kits in stock, uh, the shameless sales pitch. I do believe that they are priced more competitively than most of the other companies on the market right now and they don't have um, a welded manifold. They don't have, you know, different things that can, you know, cause, you know, not, not only issues down the road as far as reliability, but also um, fitment issues. Not that everybody's has that. I'm not trying to hate on anybody. I just, I'm just very proud of, of, of the product here. So anyway, if you guys got any questions, let us know. Uh, if you want some more videos like this, then um, I guess comment and some click thing somewhere, I don't know, somewhere. And there it is. <laughs> All right, appreciate y'all and uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and happy holidays.